On today's episode, I'm going to teach you all about a company that I love called Fox Rocks and the man behind it, Dave Fox. He's a legend. You're going to learn a ton. We're going to play all of his new pedals and you just need to get comfortable. Dave Fox has been working in electronics and making pedals for a long, long time. He is a hero to me in this industry because of these amazing circuits that he's developed over the years. So I asked him if I could call him and learn a bit about how he got started. Well, I went to the Institute of Audio Research in 1983 okay. and 84. And, and when I was there, I wasn't really into being a recording engineer, you know, after like about six months of it. But what I was really into was the circuit maintenance and stuff like that, working in a studio, doing maintenance. And so I took some extra courses in that and actually actually went a few more extra months to take more courses after I graduated. And that led to me getting a job at Crest Audio. I got it through their job placement, the job at Crest Audio in uh, fall of 84, uh, which was being a, a QC technician for their new line of mixing boards. A couple years later, Dave is repairing a mixer and he needs some parts. So he goes back to the warehouse to find them and stumbles into a proverbial gold mine that launches him into the pedal industry. Yeah, I was working on, I was working on a mixing console and I needed to go uh, get some parts from the warehouse. So I went to this other room where they had these, these shelves that nobody would go back to. You know, there was dust in them and there was all these old parts. And there was a couple of fuzz faces and there was also a couple of boxes full of trend faces. So I grabbed one of those fuzz faces and we had this demo room where you could set up an amp and stuff. So I brought in my amp and my guitar and I plugged into the fuzz face and it sounded awful. It was a dud. I think there were two or three of them there. They were duds and they all sounded awful. They barely passed the signal, you know, just like the farting out sound. I remember thinking, wow, Hendrix was really good to get a sound like this out of the fuzz face, you know. How does he sound like that and I sound like this? So I was messing around with it. Around the same time, there was a, a, an article in Guitar Player magazine by Craig Anderton about yeah. the fuzz face, the technology of the fuzz face. So I had that, that article. It gave me a little bit of background. You know, I didn't have the internet. So I got a little background. I was reading about it and I came up with the idea of making them again. It seemed like a cool idea. And I went to the president of the company, John Lee, and, and told him what I wanted to do. And he said, yeah, go ahead and get it started. Here are a couple of examples of actual mid-80s crest fuzz faces uh, that Dave is responsible for. So two colors here that I'm aware of. They have BC109s in them. And they're really, really cool. Fun to have these in the collection. He stopped making these. Crest let that whole idea go. But in 1992, he starts his own pedal brand called Fox Rocks. So let's jump into his current line. I'm going to walk you through what I like about those. These pedals that Dave built in the early 90s are part of the very first original lineage of boutique pedals in the same camp as early Full Tone, George Trips with Way Huge, the Klon Centaur, things like that. And they're really, really cool and really important and extremely hard to find. So today I'm only going to focus on the modern versions of his pedals, the things he's producing today that you can go buy right now from his website. And let's start with this guy the CC Hybrid 2. The CC Hybrid 2 is his take on what a really good fuzz face should sound like. As a matter of fact, it first came to be as the fuzz face in one of his very early pedals called the Captain Coconut. That's what CC stands for. And what's really cool about this, it is the first ever produced hybrid transistor fuzz face, meaning there's not two germaniums or two silicons. It's actually one of both and it makes it really stable. It has great characteristics, it's very tunable. It's just a really fantastic fuzz pedal and it carries on that lineage from his crest day. So I like it for that. We're gonna jam on it. And uh, what I like most about this is its ability to not go nuts. Like you can have some overdriven, nice mid gain fuzz tones and that's what we're gonna do with it right now. I'm going to play the 335 style Collings guitar and to show you how well it responds to your guitar's volume knob and how it cleans up, I'm going to leave the bridge pickup full blast volume all the way up so it's super distorted towards the end of the jam and up front I'm going to have it on the neck pickup and the volume barely on so it's super clean. You'll see me flip the switch and you'll hear a lot more fuzz. <laughs>
next pedal and one of my favorites that he's ever made is the Octron. There is a version two and there's a version three. I mean, technically there's a one somewhere, but I don't have that one. And the two is what I'm gonna demo. Um, the main difference here is size and feature set on stomp switches. So let's talk about the two and then you'll understand the three. The two basically has an octave up on a foot switch, direct on a foot switch, meaning clean signal, and then octave down on a foot switch. And you have a bypass button. The three, uh, you just have one setting. You kind of put your knobs where you want them, octave up, octave down, direct, stuff like that. So this is really simple and this is a little more user-friendly in a live scenario. Now the octave up is a take on this, but it's not really at all like this. It's an op amp version of an Octavia, which is really cool and original. And then the octave down is inspired by the Octoplus, the FX35. If you know about this, then you're in a secret club of really cool people who know things about really cool pedals. All that's in here. It's great. I'm gonna lay this next to this just to keep it in your head. Um, and we're gonna play some like robot blues or something. I don't know. Jetsons blues. <laughs> The next pedal here, the third pedal, it's so much to talk about that I can't get it all talked about. I'm on, that's a good statement. I can't get it all out right now. So we're gonna do a live episode Wednesday. If you're watching this right now, Friday. Wednesday, we're just gonna cover this pedal. It is the Zim. It looks fairly simple, but then there's the mini Zim. The back's off for a reason because this is simply one side of this, or you could say this is two of these put together. Now here's the magic. You take the back off, there's a little screw here. I've always wanted to do this, and I think every other pedal builder in the universe has, but he actually did it. You just pull the main circuit out and replace it with any of these circuits. And they're like super cheap. I think they're like 20, 30 bucks or something. You can trade your old ones back into him. Look at this, look at this, it's crazy. You just, it's like a modular, perfect pedal. A modularly perfect pedal. Anyway, I'm using his big muff style circuit, which is cool and it's definitely a big muff, but it's different and I like that. Let's jam. <laughs> Next up is a brand new Fox Rocks pedal. I actually can't find it on his website or anything, but we talked about it on the email that we had going. He sent it in. It's really cool. It is called the Two Boost. So a boost here controlled with a boost control. And then you have this top switch so you can engage a second boost. Now this gets really wild because this is a phase shift tunable boost. So instead of like your normal tone control, he's actually using a phase shift type circuit to find exactly where you want the frequency to lie. It's wild. It's really wild. I've never seen anything like this. 
I'm going to set it up with this cool sound where it's almost like when I engage this, it's like this kind of lo-fi, very, very cool, flabby treble booster. I don't know how else to describe it. It's really fun. So I'm going to start the jam, just the amp. I'm going to turn on the boost, and you're going to notice that this is slamming into the front of the amplifier, overdriving it. And then by the time I hit this, which will be stage three, it's going to be crazy. It's like a really nice crunchy overdrive. So I'm excited for this. Just go check it out. Email him. Look on his website. It's probably for sale now, now that this is airing. Next up is the FR100 Overdrive. This is most likely ending up on a pedal board near me very soon because of the form factor being so small and having a really versatile control set. So you have the overdrive here on this foot switch and then you have controls for that. Now, it has the clipping section of a Tube Screamer. And I say that cautiously because I can hear people's thoughts Oh, a Tube Screamer. Well, no, this is really cool. It has a totally different feeling to me. There's definitely some adjustments going on here. And then when you engage this, you engage a lead channel, which is super useful and way better than traditional formats like this. So we're all familiar with the full drive, but I've never been a fan of that. You hit the boost, there's not a lot of volume and it can honestly just sound like nothing happened in certain settings. This does not, do that. This is very, very cool. I could see this being the only drive pedal on your board or a board of mine. So we're going to jam on this. Uh, low gain first. I'm going to smash this on for a lead sound. And it's yellow. I mean, I feel good about yellow things as well. It's all yellow. <laughs> Last pedal that we're doing here, it's actually two pedals. It's really to feature the Aqua Vibe. Let's talk about the Aqua Vibe and then we'll talk about the hot silicon. First, this guy. So when he started Fox Rocks in 1992, the very first thing he ever built was called a Pro Vibe. And this was his rendition and replication of an original Univibe, uh, which at the time, they were hard to find like they are now, but they were broken when you find them. And he just got into making his own and a lot of people were ordering them and it became pretty popular. The Aqua Vibe is simply that concept, but for 2020, it's had a great enclosure size, sounds fantastic. And one of the best things about his version of this circuit is the center control. This is usually an internal trimmer that's fragile, finicky, something as a builder, I don't even want people to mess with sometimes, but he puts it on the outside and he binds the perimeters in where it's useful the whole way. I love it. It kind of changes that point at which the Univibe, I say thumps. There's like a way that it goes, it goes over and the waveform comes back down. Very, very cool. I messed with that for a while, love it. Yeah. So big knob, you can move with your foot or you have an external expression. And then there's the hot silicon too. So you saw the, the Captain Coconut fuzz earlier, the hybrid. This is a truly pure silicon, a uh, little bit hotter tone, more gain, more fuzz because of the transistors. I'm going to combine them, play a Strat and just, you know, play like a bad Hendrix thing for you. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
These pedals are fantastic. I hope you enjoy these demos. Go check out other demos and just know that Dave Fox is a really, really fantastic designer. These are made phenomenal. One of the things that we discussed on the phone call is that he takes his approach to pro audio building mixers and desks for people. And he puts that level of detail into the construction of these pedals. Dave works on huge front of house rigs for massive tours and like A-level bands. And he's done that for decades and decades. And you can tell that when you open these pedals, the way they're built, the way that they function, it's very, very high quality. And again, he's responsible for pushing the boutique thing forward and for companies like JHS even being around. He's a big player in that. And so I'm thankful for that. And I love these pedals for that reason as well. Let's go to record time. Today's record time is brought to you by the year 1992. That's when Fox Rock started. That's when Nick was born, Addison was born, and Pavement was forever born as a band with their album, Slanted and Enchanted. I'm a huge Pavement fan, and I wanna say this up front. This is a tough listen for me, even as a fan, but there are 20% of you who are gonna hear this record and your lives are gonna be changed forever from this moment on. 80% of you are absolutely gonna hate this. You're probably gonna put hate messages in the comments, you're gonna email, you're gonna show up at the door here. You're gonna be really mad that I even recommended this, but for that 20%, it's worth it. It's the 80-20 rule of music. I just invented it right now. People are gonna talk about it in the future. It's a thing right now. Check this out. Let me know if you're part of the 80 or the 20 in the comments. If you know about Pavement and you love them, let's talk about their music and what your favorite record is. If you don't care about Pavement and you think record time's stupid, just put a comment about that as well, because that'd be fun to know. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Just a big reminder that this coming Wednesday, we will go to town on these. I'm gonna use all 11 cards, I think. I have a ton of cards for these. So we're gonna go through these, we're gonna discuss them, we're gonna do some jams, and we will do a live Q&A. Might even give away something, I don't know. If I'm feeling right, we're gonna give something away. So check that out. If you like this episode, hit like, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to get notifications of every future episode. Also check out thejhsshow.com for shirts, onesies, posters, stuff you don't really need, but you absolutely want. And then if you wanna be a member of the Patreon, that basically helps us support what we're doing here. Archiving of history, there's all kinds of special things for you. Giveaways, discounts, I do lectures over there, long form talks about pedal history. If you're a nerd, it's a must. That link is in the description below. That's all I have. Go check out more demos of Fox Rocks. Peruse their website, email Dave, bother him, annoy him. I'm sure he'll love it. Have a great day.